How's everybody doing tonight? Hello. Um, I want to thank um, Ari for coming back and, you know, talking with us again. I want, also want to thank Sherelle for joining us tonight. Um, there's a lot to discuss. Um, also, um, to my moderators, again, just make sure that everybody's respectful to our guests. You guys did an amazing job, as you always do last night. Um, and uh, let's just everybody be respectful. So a lot has happened in 24 hours, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what kind of, um, you know, how, how's it been for you, Ari, since last night, uh, you know, coming out and speaking and how's it been? Scary, um, overwhelming because, you know, I know that, yeah. Can what, you maybe, uh, can you turn your, your volume up a little bit? Oh, I'm sorry. You can hear me now? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I was saying that it, um, it was kind of scary and overwhelming. Um, I did get a lot of support, people um, inboxing and that kind of thing, and, and I really appreciate that. Um, but it is, it's very scary because you still have women who can't speak out um, and they're on the run. I, I'm, you know, someone who he can find and potentially harm or um, even try to pull me into court for things. I mean, of course, I can prove these things, but it's just, it's a lot of um, risk, but I felt as though I could not keep silent. So, you know, I'm, I'm here, <laughs> but it has been in the last 24 hours, it's been very overwhelming, very. Good overwhelming though, like, but like, you know, like, you know, Good. just. It's a mixture. I have okay. mixed, I'm, I'm at, in one, one light, I'm feeling vindicated. I feel like for the first time in the last couple of years that I've been holding this in that people actually believe me you know i'm not crazy i'm not <laughs> i'm not but tough I, to feel like you're like the crazy one and right. you know that, like they tried to paint me i'm the liar um you know or i'm fabricating things so it feels good to have people listening you know and um the on the other end it's that's the attention and i just don't like you know having folks um, have negative comments and that kind of thing. Cause it's at the end of the day, I'm still a victim and I'm still healing, you know, and healing isn't linear. It takes a lot of time to heal. And I feel like now the healing process can really, really begin because I'm able to speak, you know, finally. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I do want the same for the other women, uh, the other sister wives. I want them to be able to start the healing process as well by getting their stories out, by being able to speak. So, yeah, I mean, the whole, you know, one of the main reasons why I decided to come forward is because they couldn't and they needed somebody to know that what they saw on the show was not the case. It was not the case. Everything was scripted. Everything was controlled. So, yeah. And we're going to get into that tonight. Um, Sherelle, you have any? Yeah, I did. I just wanted to publicly thank you for sharing your story. I can imagine how difficult it is, but it also helps a lot of other people and it prevents other victims from walking in your shoes. So I just want to thank you and say that what you did was very brave and courageous. I appreciate that. And, you know, um, I was looking, you know, cause I look at what people post um, and Taylor, I don't know if you saw that, but Taylor is, um, she did a, a story this morning. I'll play it. <laughs> empowered. <laughs> I feel empowered and I feel like us girls are getting a voice and um, I'm going to figure out the appropriate way to use mine in due time. Not a moment before. On my time. Divine time. Mm -hmm. I shame. I shame. I shame. And, and that so made me like funny. really happy because like, obviously like, you know, that was towards for you. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously she can't really say anything because she's on the show, but that made me smile um because you know and she's on the show right now and she's you know just like you went through it she's going through it um and that made me uh, really happy so and that it, it must be good to, good for you to know that you have the support of of them yes yes yeah right Wait, it, obviously you're, obviously you're not this crazy person right that's like just yeah. spreading lies it's you know we could see it yeah. And when we share our stories, when we talk and we do talk, um, it's identical. It's it's almost as if 
we're all reading from the same book and it's, it's scary. It's scary that people have been allowed to continue the same behavior and doing the same thing for so long. And he's been able to charm his way out of everything. Like literally every person, male or female, does not matter. <laughs> people all say the same thing. Like he presented himself to be a very nice and genuine guy. And he has a great personality and yeah. Yeah. Textbook narc. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what do you need? Oh, um, I, I kind of, I had to, I, I need to read, Ashley just came out with a statement. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I saw um, uh, if you want to call it a statement, but Ashley, uh, I'm going to read this out to everybody, uh, because, um, it's very long winded, uh, and it really doesn't say anything, but I think it's important to, you know, share both sides. And this is, this is what Ashley's saying. Um, <clears throat> it's rare that I react to situations that occur in my life. I'm not a reactionary person. With the exception of danger or cross boundaries, then I think I can move on very quickly. Instead, I choose to move with as much as much intention as possible because I love and respect myself, and I don't ever have to have to apologize for stepping outside of myself due to reactivity. Um, I know a lot of you want answers to the swirling drama surrounding me, and trust every day is a real work, not to match the energy that's being targeted my way. In being true to myself, however, I will not react or be forced into any corner, especially when those talking aren't doing so honestly. We all have a story, but telling it with integrity is so very important. I remind myself daily that I'm protected and that because I'm on television, um, the level of scrutiny is intensified and as a result, make things feel much more urgent than they are. Keeping this in perspective, knowing justice has always been served and that the urgency of the naysayers isn't my urgency <sighs> helps me. Sh I, don't, I don't know how you live with this girl. If she's, I'm just sorry. I'm just, it's too much. Um, knowing justice has already been served and the urgency of the naysayers isn't my urgency helps me to show to my life and the little people who are on the recover, the receiving end of my energy daily, my children. I know I will have the opportunity to speak my truth on these things. So there's no rush. Two more paragraphs and then it's done. Those who know me and my situation have given me so much love and support over the last couple of months. And I'm so very grateful, but I'm human. I'm a mother with children to look out for. And though I may not react to every little comment, listen to every rumor or watch the videos, I know what's being shared and I'm collecting the data. In the meantime, I've turned off comments to protect the energy of the space. Everything I've shared up to this point and all that comes after is sacred to me. I've helped and been helped by many in this space over the years. Um, fo oh, folks, F-O-L-X. Oh, that's cute. Folks who are attracted to the drama can get it elsewhere. Those who need to reach me know how to. Is that a denial? <laughs> right. That's what do you? The third class. <laughs> He's a wordsmith. I mean, that was yeah. the most right? verbose, yeah. uh, uh, thesaurus laden statement um, that I have ever seen. Right. And and she um, did not confirm or deny anything. She did not. Yeah. Um, to say that the people who are talking are not doing so with integrity, that woman knows nothing about integrity. She wouldn't know integrity if that shit hit her in the head. It's not. <laughs> what do you, it's what not, do you think she meant by um, it? I'm. It's not. I'm not. It, that's not my urgency. What do you think that? Well, because she. I mean, you wouldn't be. Ur you wouldn't be urged to say anything if you have nothing to say. What are you going to say? What proof do you have that these things didn't happen? Yeah. You have four women who are saying the same. Five actually, because there's another woman that wants to talk to you, John. Five. Then you have people who weren't in the marriage, but live with them that have the same stories. Mm -hmm. So she has no, no, she has no dog in this fight. Sister don't, she can't say anything. What are you going to say? Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Well, it didn't happen. Okay. Well, let's prove that in court. And, and that's at, at the end of the day, you know, if it comes to litigation, I'm ready. 
I am absolutely ready. Because and I you do have the receipts because I said. Absolutely. Tons of them. And I'm not the only one with receipts. So she has nothing to say. She can't defend herself. And she wants to save face. And she does that same spiritual pseudo bullshit she's been doing for the longest. She'll talk you into a circle and she'll walk away. I mean, that whole statement was talking circles with lots of flashy words that yeah. got you nowhere. Yeah. I think I lost like a year of my life reading that statement. Like that way it was just <laughs> awful. She, she would have done better just being quiet and not saying anything because she said nothing in that statement. Um, and she just alluded to or allowed people to... Um, be able to continue to put pieces together on her character and yeah, who she is. So I feel like she was backed into a corner. If she didn't say anything, everyone's waiting for a statement. You look really bad if you don't say anything. You had to say something. You can't come out and say, I did it. I mean, I guess you could. She chose not to do that route. Mm -hmm. So she just put a bunch I almost of words feel like together. TLC, like maybe put her up to that and said, like, uh, I, I don't know. I'm just like, you know, spitballing here, but like that. Like to make a statement and say nothing like that, like just makes me seem like that was almost forced or, you I know. I didn't have to say anything, but I said something. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if TLC did nudge her or urge her to say something. Um, yeah. All right, so I need my phone. <laughs> Hold on one second. Um, so, I'm gonna try something new here, um, and I'm gonna share a screenshot. Uh, Cheryl kind of walked me through it, but I will most likely screw it up because I am not great with technology. <laughs> so just bear with me. It, it's the first time I'm ever trying this. Um, hold on. All right, so share, share screen, right, Cheryl? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Share screen. And I screwed it up, so never mind. All right, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna go to the overlay then. Okay. okay, okay. I have it on the desktop too. All right, so yesterday we spoke about, um, you know, how you reached out to TLC, and I have the emails here to prove that. Mm -hmm. um, so let's let's just talk about this. I don't even know if anybody can read it. Oh, I don't want to put you on in the, here. Hold on one second. Let me get rid of that. Let me put just so you can be on camera while I do this. Um, Nope. <laughs> Email one. Here we go. All right. So, and to those who can't read it, um, I will read it out loud. Um, all right. So you are reaching out to Leah, who is the vice president of litigation for the network for discovery. Yes. Oh, wow. And that, that's her title, vice president of litigation. Um, you know, and here, um, let me see, email one. Okay. Um, you know, good morning, good morning, good evening. This Now this is her assistant um, emailing you. I hope this email finds you well. My name is CS, yes, I'm Leah's assistant. I'll, I am writing to you to see if Wednesday is okay to have a call with Leah. Um, is that phone number that you listed the best way to reach you? And you reply, good evening, yes. Um, hope all is well, yes, yes, yes. So then the next, the next um, email, um, sorry, um, is, <laughs> I have him out of order. I'm so sorry. Hold on. I so, still, okay. So Leah writes to you, um, just bear with me guys. Okay. Leah writes to you, Yes, this relates to the comment you left with review relations. I'm traveling this afternoon, but can speak with you briefly at 4 p.m. This is on March 14th of 2018. Uh, please let me know the best number to reach you or call me on my on my cell below. Otherwise, let's plan to connect next week once I'm back in the office. Again, you give her you give her your cell. Um, you can reach me at this number anytime. Um, then Leah writes back, "Hi, I tried to call you and I I miss you." And then you know I'm going out of town. Um, and then, trying to find the one where you mentioned their name. It just, I've been going, I'm trying to, there's been a lot that I've been trying to put in order. 
So forgive me. Um, okay, so it's this one. Okay. Um, hi, Ari. I'm writing from Discovery Communications regarding the comment you recently submitted to viewer relations. Can you please let me know when you're available to call or discuss? You said, hi, Leah. I'm available today anytime after 4 p.m. Is this in regards to the Snowdens? Um, and then she replies, you know, yes, this relates to the comment you left with viewer relations. I'm traveling, and here we go. So whatever happened with, with that? So she called and... I told her everything that happened to me. Um, I told her about all the criminal criminal activity from Dimitri, him being a felon, um, him having a new social security number, which is why, because she told me something about them doing a background check. And I said, well- Wait, so did he have a fake social security <clears throat> number? Yes, he has, he does. Um, I, I asked her, I said, well, wow. which social do you have? Wow. And she My said- That's why people can't find- no, Exactly, no. exactly. Wow. This is how he's been able to wow. even get the house that we were living in in Georgia, the, the big house. He was able to rent it. He had a new CPN. And that's illegal. That's illegal. So I asked her, I said, well, which which so, uh, social do you have? <laughs> because he, he got a new one. And um, of course, you know, she she was she said, well, you know, we, we checked this background. We didn't see anything. Um, but yeah. I, I told her, you know, that he was a felon. That I also told her about the um, the fraud case in uh, Ohio. Indiana. Okay. Yeah, Indiana. And I told her, you know, you can find that online. Like it was literally online. Around this time, after he found out that I started talking about that or I contacted him or whatever, he had the article with his picture taken down. But there's still an article up about the story. So he started to scrub the internet. Of certain wow. things, basically. But I'm you sure know, like how he got like another social security number. Like, did he like borrow someone's all like, off a dead person's? Like, how did how did he get like a? It, was it like linked to his name? Like, how does that work? You know, I don't know how, no. it worked, but I know who gave it to him, and I don't I don't want to say because I don't want to get her in trouble. But um, yeah, she gave him the CPN and. Um, that's how he obtained it. Now, I really don't know how it works outside of that. I just know that once you have the social security number, you can start to, because it, it comes with credit. Like you you have a fresh slate. So now you can rent, you can buy, you can do whatever you need to do, build your credit up, however. Um, but whatever social they had, I can guarantee you it wasn't his original social. And this is part of the reason why they probably could not find things on him immediately but he is a felon and he is not supposed to have possession of guns. And this is how I know for an absolute fact is because he still can't buy guns to this day. He still has actually purchasing guns for him. I actually have text on that too. And yeah, they recently ran gun uh, guns or tried to ship guns from California, which is legal to have guns in California. He actually has guns in California um, to another state where he was staying. Was that the state you told me about? where Chrissy was? Yes. Yes. So, yeah. Um, yeah. This is, I, uh, anyway, I told him about his criminal activity. I, told I mean, that's him, all sorts of fraud. Like, ha yes. you have a second social security number? Yeah. When they, when they crack open, you know, this goes to court and they start cracking open this case, that man is going to jail. It's, it's no, absolutely no way he can evade this unless you, there's you a miracle. You think Ashley has one too? I don't know what she has. <laughs> she might. I mean, I'm not really sure. I know that she knows what he has, though. She knows what he's doing, and she's complicit in it all. So, but I did tell TLC, the you know, um, head of litigation, everything I knew, and she said, you know, they'll get back to me. They'll run it by the team. I hadn't heard anything else, and the show continued, and they continued to bring women in, and these women were put under NDAs. Um, of course, you know, with TLC, they may have an NDA where, because I've worked, I work in um, the film business, so we get NDAs all the time. Before they give us a script, if it's a, a big uh, production, they'll make us sign NDAs that we won't leak the script, that kind of thing. We won't take pictures on set. But this NDA that he gave them was they couldn't share text, they couldn't um, share pictures, nothing. They can say nothing. They couldn't do interviews, anything. And I think this NDA may be up to 10 years or something. 
So oh. yeah, it, it was an airtight NDA is what I, I was told. So, I mean, who would make you sign an NDA to enter a relationship if there's nothing to hide? That's the first, first red flag, right? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they all, you know, once they're able to tell their story and they will be, they will be. And the world will know for an absolute fact, you know, once all these women are able to talk, everybody can corroborate the other story. But yeah, TLC, um, very disappointed with them. And yeah, it's awful because they knew, they knew. And even after I did, someone else called. And then someone else called. Did they ever but, confirm anything to you? Like that they, they were looking into what you alleged and, you know, they found... Those were the only correspondences. You notice after that, there were no more. Wow. I heard nothing else. What do you do? That's sick. Yeah. No words. Uh, yeah. I don't even know how to process that. And another social security number. How do you, God, that's, that's a level of Criminal. thievery. I, I, can't, I can't even like wrap my head around. Yeah. Wow. All right. Sherelle, anything on? Uh, I don't know, but I, I know that flabbergasted. I'm flabbergasted. A lot of people were saying in the chat, in my chat, that TLC should be held accountable. Do you feel that way? Absolutely. I believe that they should sue the shit out of TLC and they should not stop until they get what they need from these people because TLC knew and they put those women's lives in danger and their children. Like that's, that's, that's low. It's very sick. And yeah, they deserve whatever, whatever they can get out of this situation because those women went through hell. I mean, you still deal. They're literally still hiding. All three, all three are still hiding Oof. and can't say anything. And I, I know what that feels like to be, to have been victimized by somebody and had your children, I mean, we literally had to go to therapy after leaving that house. So I know if I went through some things they went through and, and from what I know, they went through way worse. You know, there were a lot of things that was happening um, that didn't happen to me. Even though I experienced violence, they experienced some other things. And so can you imagine just not being able to say anything and have people, you watch, people watching the show right now and they're making comments like, oh, you know, well, she wanted the D and she, no way. Uh, it, do you it, know, was scripted, it was edited, you know, for entertainment. This is entertainment, you know, at the end of the day. So, but it wasn't really what was happening when the cameras were not there. It was a lot of traumatic stuff happening. When TLC, you know, go ahead, John, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Um, um, Natalie has a good question. Do you know what would happen if like um, a woman violated the Snowden NDA? Like, do, do you know of any like, um, instances like like or like what would have happened like I, I guess it would have been sued or whatnot yeah they they would just sue but i mean from what i know he needed a plane ticket to get from the state he was in back to la so and that was about two weeks ago a little over two weeks so he doesn't have money apparently so whoever he's going to be borrowing money from to fight these women he's going to have to fight all three so if cool. he has what are you going to say cheryl banner then but I, you know, once they lawyer up, I'm sure um, them having, and they have, you know, they're doing so, um, they'll be able to get the proper counsel so that they know how to move in this, in this instance. So I wouldn't pressure them to go against something that they, they're not comfortable with. I would definitely tell them to get a lawyer involved because they want to make sure that they protect themselves. Because one thing I know about him is that he would try to, the, the court route, he did it to Jay. You know, mm. so I know he would try if he thought he had something he can do, you know. So an NDA would be like if they, they broke the NDA and he was able to take them to court. Because I know for sure, because Chrissy has already filed charges against him, that NDA has been broken because she filed charges. So um, I'm really not sure. I'm not sure. And I can't really speak on it from a legal standpoint. I, I would prefer them to, you know, once they position themselves to be able to speak then I'll allow them to, to speak on it. I was going to say, when you realized that T TLC was not going to return your messages and things like that, what did you do next? What were your thoughts and how did you feel? 
Um, one of the other things I did was went to the internet. So I started to post text messages. Oh. I started, I actually created a very long post that was scrubbed off the internet and it made it to Reddit. And it was oh. for a minute, so it started to circulate and people talked, but that was it. You know, once they took it, took it off the internet, it was no longer there. And because they were able to continue the show, nobody really believed me and I was kind of buried my story. Um, I did take to people that we knew in the polygyny group. Um, a lot of them knew the activity, some didn't. And I talked to them. I was silenced in that group by one of the members who was a good friend of Dimitri's. And he was an admin, so he was able to take down the pictures and text messages I put there too. So I was I was essentially silenced and mm -hmm. there was nothing I could do. And I, I didn't know what to do. Um, mm -hmm. So I didn't do anything. Yeah, I get that. I, I think what you said before was important that like, you know, all three girls are in hiding. You know, you have Vanessa, uh, Chrissy and Taylor all in hiding. You're not in hiding for like a reason. Somebody just asked um, about NDAs, if, if you could break them, if it's, you know, illegal activities going on. I don't, I don't know the answer to that. I don't I mean, know. I spoke to a lawyer, a lawyer myself, an attorney, and he said NDAs are contracts and contracts are broken every day. And if somebody is in danger, you you have the right to speak. So, yeah, that's what I was told by an attorney. There's ways people are asking about scrubbing the internet. Like there's there's services that like you know if you um, pay a service, they can like take that take down all the bad stuff people say that's, about you. Actors do it all the time. I mean, I'm I'm in that world, so I know a bunch of actors who are like very well known actors, and when they were coming up. Say, for instance, you book a big TV show and you you have like this contract with the um, with one of the uh, well-known production companies. The first thing you're going to do is make sure that there's nothing that someone can find negative on you. If you have a publicist, if you you know, you have these people, you have a team and you can get your team to do this and they can scrub the Internet of old pictures and bad articles, whatever. And so Dimitri, I mean, he's in LA, so he figured it out. He figured out who he needed to call. I mean, this man was, he bought, he created his fame on online. He bought followers. He has, he's certified and nobody even knew him before the show. So, you know, he bought followers. He created an image online. He even has his network at $2 million. Like that can even be manipulated. And people have to understand, you know, it's all smoke and mirrors at the end of the day. Um, and there's a lot of actors who have done a lot of things, but you know, if you're an athlete, an actor, a billionaire, and you are in this world of, you know, deviance shit, whatever you're doing, you right. can make sign NDAs and they can't talk. So if you have a party, I can tell you, listen, you can't get in this party unless you sign an NDA. You can't come on this trip unless you sign an NDA. You can't be in this movie unless you sign an NDA. So NDAs are used throughout Hollywood, throughout the business world to silence people, to keep secrets, to keep things hidden. So he just, he knew how to work the system. He knew how to scrub the internet. He knew how to keep people silent. Um, he has to get the gift of gab. So he'll make you believe whatever he says. So if he tells you, Hey, you know, I have this great idea and I need you to invest in X, Y, and Z. And then he sells this idea in such a way that you're like, Oh my God, I, if I miss out on this deal, <laughs> I'll be stupid not to invest, right? And then you invest and he leaves with your money. Because a lot of people like, you know, um, have been saying, you know, you know, I think it was uh, out there that Taylor was an, um, you know, she was an actress, you know, you're an actress. Vanessa had, you know, done parts, but you made a very good point, you know, last night that, you know, you, you were around before they were ever on TV and they wanted <laughs> They wanted people who were in the business to help catapult them. Exactly. And that's why they kind of searched, they they looked for actors. Right. right. This is what they wanted. They wanted fame. They wanted the limelight, you know? And they, they ate that shit up. They ate it up. They're eating it up now. Like this is still any publicity, good or bad, it's still publicity. So you still people are still going to the show. They want to watch it now. So TLC's ratings has probably gone up. They're going to her page, his page. They're trying to get information. They're, you know, they're they're still getting the attention that they originally wanted. So long before the show, they were dating me and I was an actor. And I'm a well established. If you go on my IMDB, you'll see I've been acting long before all no, you I, I looked at your page on IMDB. You have you have some nice credits. Thank you. Um, Thank you know, you were in Venom. 
I, you know, I was, I was looking. I just started watching. <laughs> I just um, started watching. But yeah, <laughs> it's not like you know, you, you have like you know some nice credits. Um, Alicia just asks, were you allowed to have family or friends visit you? I noticed how Ashley was side eyeing when Vanessa's sisters came um, and invited her yeah. to lunch alone. Yeah, she. Um, yeah. So the only person that ever came to visit was my my two older daughters' father, my ex husband. Um, and Dimitri only invited him because he wanted to to brag and flex in front of him. That this is the word that they use. So flex. He wanted, you know, we had a big house in Georgia, although he was renting, and you know he wanted him to see it. So he's like, yeah, yeah, invite him over. After that, he never came back. He never bothered to have a relationship with him. In fact, he was trying to get me to change my daughter's last name. Right. Um, so yeah, he had no interest in being friends, and that that was the only family that I had. And did Ashley try and uh, reach out to them, or when they were there, or like, was it? Did she even care? Uh, with my children. Well, what were your family like? Did she ever be? No, she never spoke. Neither of them met my parents. Um, neither of them talked to my parents. They never asked questions. In fact, because they didn't have a relationship with their parents, it was kind of par for the for the course. Like they, you know they didn't really put emphasis around that. Their emphasis was around them creating their own family and their own unit. So I never saw any family come. I'm on live, baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry. Um, I never saw family, sisters visit. Her mother never visited. Um, his mother never visited, never. Ever. In fact, Ashley hadn't even met his mother and they had been together for 10 years. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not 10. I think it was seven years at the time that I was with them. And she had never met his mother. The The mo mother and father had never met the children. Shirley, you look like you have a question. Well, I'm no, I'm shocked because on the show, uh, Dimitri's family came and her family came, her mm -hmm. sister and her mom. And so that was kind of exaggerated because you're saying that they never came. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it, there was a fight that broke out yeah. with Dimitri and his sister at the wedding. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So this is, you know, a family who were incredibly dysfunctional, obviously, and hadn't seen each other in a long time. And some stuff blew up. <laughs> and, you know, with Ashley's mom, like, I think Ashley may have, may have talked to her mother more than Dimitri, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, but Ashley didn't seem to have a tight knit relationship with her mother. She talked more to her sister. I actually remember talking to her sister um, because her sister wanted to talk to the children and Ashley was out, I was there. So mm -hmm. I um, allowed the, I think it was Nainu that talked to her sister, but I never heard her talk to the mom or FaceTime with the mother, with his parents or anything like that. What about friends? Did any friends suspect something wasn't right? She didn't have friends. Oh, wow. um, it, none, none of them visit, visited the house, but she she would say that. She would say she didn't have friends. Um, and he had even made a joke about it. He was like, well, you you know, you fight all your friends and you run all your friends off because in college she talked about how she fought one of her friends and um, all of her friends she basically just didn't get along with and they fell out. Um, there was one woman, she mentioned her name um, and she made soaps or something like that. And then there was a woman that she met at the park or something like that. And um, she started to come around, but shortly, sh shortly after, she wasn't seen again because mm -hmm. Dimitri tried to make her a wife too. Wait, what? <laughs> the thing was, I think I think she refrained from having friends or resisted having friends because um, he would try to sleep with the women. He would try to make them the wife, or, or, or a wife, um, and they would have conversations about that too. They would have, they would say stuff about even the babysitter and she's much older. <laughs> it was like, they considered bringing her in as a wife. It was, it was just a conversation, you know, but it was weird. It was very weird that he even brought that up. And, but yeah, any woman that came around would most certainly be seen as a potential wife to Dimitri. So. so um, I just want to, I think Holly had a good, Somebody's somebody has asked a good question, and um, I did the, the I can't keep up with the chat um because there's like 1,200 people in the room, and it's it's oh moving. Gosh. Um, and I I'm sorry if I miss wow. a question um or a, a chat um, 
Rose says, I'm a uh, domestic violence survivor. Thank you for telling your story and finding your voice. God bless you, Ari. Thank you, Rose. Um, I definitely Holly, want to thank all. TLC should be held accountable, and Ari, you will have my blessings fall upon you for sharing your story. John, I have all new, that was right for you. Thank, thank you, thank you, that was really sweet. Um, I want, I really want to get into the text because it's kind of, kind, it's going to kind of link all three lives that I've done about this, um, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, and tonight. Mm -hmm. So, um, Ari's given me some text messages that she's had, um, between her and Ashley and her and Dimitri. And um, she's giving me permission to post them. So I'm gonna put them in the, um, on the overlay now. I wish I knew how to do it the right way, but I don't. So I'll read them out loud. Um, so these are texts that, um, I kind of want you to walk us through this. So okay. this is, let me, let me get me in the middle. There we go. All right, so that way. Okay, so um, in this text, um, you're, you're talking to Ashley. I'll read it out loud. I know it's tiny. Okay. Um, just thought you should be made privy. To, this is you to Ashley. Mm -hmm. Just thought you should be made privy to this information since you guys are big on sharing info with each other. Dimitri was having um, sex with Ty. Now, it's, uh, to, to remind everybody, Ty was the wife of Jay that I showed the video of with his missing children. Actually, let me just play that real quick so you guys can get like, um, and I, you know, just if you haven't seen it. Listen, the mother of my children just turned herself in to jail for running me and my children off the road. It's been over 24 hours and I do not know where my sons are. I've been calling around and calling people and I can't get nobody on the phone. The last known place that I know is that she took them out of town with a man by the name of Demetrius Snowden. And I don't know where my children are. So if you see my sons, please call 911 immediately and share this message because I don't play any games about my children. I love my children. Oof. Yeah, and um, that's Jay. We, we, we call him Jay. It's not his name, but you know, just like you know, I don't want to out him. Um, but now, when you're referencing Ty in these texts, I so, just so people are clear, Ty was Jay's, the mother of Jay's children, mm -hmm. and she was the one that took the sons with Dimitri. They were married. And, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I know. It's crazy. I, right, Terrell? I mean, it's insane. <laughs> yeah. And if you guys didn't watch, like, the first live I did on Tuesday about this, like, you know, constantly, um, you know, uh, Jay was posting, you know, through a period of six months that, you know, his, his sons were gone, um, you know, missing. He could not get a hold of them. You know, he was saying that they were kidnapped. Um, that's him with his, with his sons posting, you know, he lost, you know, and this this guy couldn't, you know, it, it just, it's very sad. Um, you know, so just, you know, if you didn't watch that, now you know. Um, but go, so I thought this was important to reshare since, you know, we're, we're going into sex mentioning these people. And, it, and that's why it ties everything together. So um, going back to this text, um, you know, you're, you're speaking with Ashley and you're saying just thought you should be made privy to the information since you guys are big on sharing each other's info. Dimitri was having sex with Ty, and that's this this guy's um, the mother of his children, mm -hmm. um, and also her cousin. Okay, so not only was he having sex with this guy's mm. wife, but the cousin of the wife. Her name was um, we'll call her Al, um, and he had. Um, who he had coming to the house to check on you. He was dealing with the woman also named uh, Naz Khalid, who lives in Vegas. Oh, and did you know that he and... Oh, shit. Sorry. Lost my spot. Oh, and did you know that he and Ty um, and her boys were in Tennessee together? So that's where this, this, man's, this man's children were. They were in Tennessee. Dimitri 
um, Dimitri Ty and her and this guy's sons. Um, did you know that he loves Ty? I have a message from him and Ty, him and Allie, and other few women. So he was, you know, having, according to these texts, having an affair with Ty, having an affair with Ty's cousin Allie, um, and a few other women. He sent Allie to um, an STD clinic and asked her to stop smoking. That told told her if he had been getting more sex from you, meaning Ashley, because you have been sick with child, that he wouldn't have slept with Ty. So he's kind of blaming, right? Uh, am, I, am I right in saying that he was blaming him sleeping with Ty because Ashley was, was pregnant and sick? Was that no, right? No. And this is me, you know, I sent that to her because at this point, I didn't know about the infidelity. I had, you know, no clue. And I'm finding out and I'm shocked. I'm hurt. I'm like, what the hell? I just could not believe it. I mean, come, me coming downstairs into the basement, seeing him and Ty asleep on the sofa. Wow. Like, I it just, I was completely thrown. And I, I know this is a lot for people to like, comprehend because it's like different names and different people and like it's so like just like you know i'm trying to do my best to like you know hone it all in together but you know that's why i was saying all this is all going to link together at the end yeah. um but i'm sorry go ahead go ahead ari yeah yeah i was just saying that it was really it was a lot to take i have of. a question no normal human being sex drive is that high do you think this has to do with control I think he, I think he might be a sex addict personally. Oh, you do? Okay. I think so. Yeah. And I think that that stems from some type of childhood trauma. Oh, oh. Um, unresolved childhood traumas. But oh, either way, there is a sickness there because there's yeah. absolutely no reason for any man to need that much I know. sex and that many women. When you have women, you have literally have two women <laughs> and you're still sleeping with others. It's just, I didn't understand it. And yeah, I, I didn't understand it. And I was when I sent that text, I was seething. I was completely hurt and upset. Was and this at the end? Like um at the like were, was this like on what what you know, right before you left? I was out of the house by then. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I you know, I didn't want to say all of what I knew while in the house because I was attacked when I did. I was yeah. <laughs> when I told him that I went through his phone, his work phone, which I had access to. And I told him all the things that I saw, I was attacked. So I didn't want to say anything else until I got the hell out of the house. So at this point I was out of the house and I sent her that text. And the way that she responded to me, let me know that she was complicit. Well, I had the whole conversation. Should I keep going and read yeah. the rest of it? Yeah. Okay. It's, um, and bear with me guys. I'm sorry. It's not like, you know, all right. So here we go. Um, <clears throat> Um, she, uh, Ashley replies, Ari, it is women like you who prevent the collective of womanhood from escaping the sickness of patriarchy. Look at her and her, like, a girl, the words, <sighs> like, I, I can't, but like, did she, like, uh, let me just get through, let me, let me try and, this is like the same bullshit with her statement, but yeah. like, um, uh, you haven't informed me of anything, my dear. A simple call to Verizon so that I can understand the terms of my account would have been sufficed. Peace, darling. What? Oh what do you God. say? <laughs> what do you say about that? Like, I was she not believe in you, or does she know? And she just she knew. You what she knew. She knew. And even if she didn't know, she wasn't. She her loyalty to Dimitri. It's, it's it's like the sick, twisted, demented relationship that they have because this man has put his hands on her. He's abused her. She said it. She's admitted in the text that he- I've seen that. Abused and I, I will read that as well. He's he's bringing women in and out of the house. He's giving her diseases. He's her and the children through all types of trauma and you're still defending him. Even now, she won't even, she won't even say like, listen, yes, my husband is a sexual deviant. Yes, my husband had me complicit in many- many things, many acts, uh, crimes against women. She won't say it. She refused, and even in this text message, I'm telling her what I saw. Nothing, nothing. And I, I sent those text messages to her between Ty and him. I sent her a lot of stuff. I just didn't you know, send you that. I just sent you the dialogue between me and her, but I sent her that stuff and she was unfazed. She didn't care. 
Wow. Clearly. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's keep going. <laughs> yeah. All right. Here we go. Um, that's, I'm on three. Um, okay. So um, you reply, you seem to be hung up on me being wicked and surely him lying to you about his interactions with me after I left the house would make you think so, but you are sleeping next to a wicked man who preys on vulnerable women and uses you to pull them in. Most of the women he, he pursues, hold on, which most of them he pursues, he tells them you would be welcoming of them. No, it's women like yourself would allow their husband to do wicked shit to women. And then Ashley replies to you, victim, peace. Please cease and desist to contact me. You reply, you are more worried about security than what diseases you and get, well, I'm sorry, you are, you are more worried about security than what diseases you will get from his recklessness. You will sink right along with him. I'm victim here. You are actually. And then she replies, this is your wish for me. And you said no. Let me go to the next one. Um, uh, Ashley writes, uh, don't put it on anybody else. You reply, no, this is your fate. You choose to allow Dimitri to continue this shit, or maybe you don't know. She replies, I don't control anyone but myself. We are all responsible for our own fate and karma. Deal with your shit, and I'll deal with mine. You wrote back, touche. Then she writes, um, also, me not trusting you has more to do with you entering Dropbox, Expedia, and using money to pay off your credit card, and all the screenshots. Hold on. Let me go to the next one. Um, sorry, now I lost my place. Uh, and all the screenshots uh, you send to everybody, you make yourself feel better instead of just walking away from situations that don't serve your highest good. You reply laughing um, emoji, walking away from a situation that doesn't serve your highest good, really? Now I know that you're okay with what he does. The fact that you don't want me to warn other women about his behavior is amazing. But you tell me women like me are the problem. Laugh out loud. And as I said, you will sync with him. And I have taken those apps off my phone so I have access to none. And as for the credit card payment, he can add that to he can add that to the imaginary ten thousand dollars he he's telling people he gave me up front. He hold on. Uh, hold on, sorry. And uh, uh, up front, he brought me in. Said he would financially, he he would be financially responsible for me and my children. So there it is. Now, since I know that you are well aware of, of what he does to women, you can stop contacting me. Also, best of luck. <sighs> yeah overwhelming the credit card we all had a bank account together and my credit card my capital one card was coming out of that account and when i left the house i didn't cut the card off because i was still in the account they had to actually have me sign an affidavit to take me off the account i didn't sign anything so they closed the account so that was that um all the other apps or whatever she's talking about i'm not really sure what she's talking about because i have no reason to go into those apps <laughs> expedia i wasn't traveling anywhere i was there trying to figure out my life with my children who we have recently been thrown out of a house and had to <laughs> figure some things out so yeah but um that was how she was able to dismiss what i was saying and what i was bringing to her um there was never any apology and i actually have text messages between he and i where he says, you know, he accepts his karma. Basically, he did not deny anything that I said to him. You know, like her, at first he, I'm sorry, at first he was denying. He pretended like he didn't know these women. And so I had to keep, you know, I'm like, oh, you're really gonna, you know, lie? You're really gonna say that this isn't true? And I found the messages, you know, that kind of thing. So he, I guess he just didn't want to continue to deny it. So he's like, yeah, you know, you're right. Because I told him a wicked soldier always falls on his own sword. And he's like, you're right, you know, 
I accept all of my karma as I always have and that kind of thing, that BS. And so that was the end of that dialogue with he and I. Um, but yeah, that's that's typical Ashley Snow. <coughs> I want to, um, you have something to say, Sherelle? Well, I don't know if you already said this in the first interview, but when you left, did you still have feelings for him? Yeah, I still loved him. Absolutely. I was heartbroken. Mm -hmm. I was completely distraught. I love those children. I loved her. I loved him. I mean, this is a woman who at one when, when I went grocery shopping and she wasn't feeling well. Um, this is one of the times that I had gotten out of the house and I went grocery shopping with the children and I bought her flowers. Like Stop I genuinely cared about her and those children and I loved him. Mm -hmm. So this wasn't a situation where I was just walking away and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm walking away and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just walking away. Like I, I was distraught and I was depressed for months, for months. I needed therapy because I did not understand what the hell just happened to me. I literally gave up everything that I had sold everything that I had to move there to start a life with them. And that's, that's what happened. You said you went to therapy. Did you take your children to, and did therapy help? Yes. Yes. Um, therapy helped a great deal. It definitely did. I was able to, you know, kind of move past a lot of the blame because I, it was shame. It was guilt. Even now, even now, when I recall the stories and, and and how it happened, I feel so stupid. I'm thinking like, oh my god, how could I? How could I even forgive them? Or the arguments, you know, a lot of the arguments that we had, they would double team me, and and I found myself apologizing to them for some shit I didn't do. Mm -hmm. I literally have a text message of me, a heartfelt apology to her for something I know I didn't do. But I was trying to be the bigger person because he was urging me to do so and telling me that I wasn't trying hard enough and you need to try 1000%, you know, gaslighting and manipulating. And so I apologized to her and she gives me the bullshit fluff that you see. Yeah. <laughs> that was a fluff after the apology. I mean, that first patriarchal, like, I'm like, oh my God, like, I, 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 did she speak like that to person to person or like was that just in text, like with that very, like, you know, verbose? Yeah, I mean, she didn't. She was better at writing than speaking. So, most times when we would have discussions, she wasn't as wordy. Um, it was more so in the writing. You know, and it's funny because, like, you know, you see, like, you know, you know, obviously you're watching a TV show and you see them like throwing the axes, and I'm like, oh, you know, she, you know, she might be fun to hang out with. And then, like, you see this side, and it's just like, yeah, I was fooled. Insane. Many people were deceived. I thought she was sweet and loving and kind and all those things. And then you see the ugly side and you realize that the ugly side is the truth and everything else is a lie. All right, we have like a little bit more to go through cause like the, um, there's a lot. Um, I wanna, um, all right, I'm gonna put up the, um, the text that you sent me between you and Dimitri, which I think is important because it, it backs up everything you said last night when he punched, um, you know, the desk. Um, and that proves that. Um, and if you, I'm going to put it up there, I'm going to read it. And maybe if you could just like, if for people who didn't watch last night, if you could just talk about like the death thing again like, and what happened, um, I guess, I think that's important. Um, all right. So um, this is a text between you and Dimitri. Um, Guys, me. <sighs> I know. And what you told me about this text too is that you know, you know you were being you know abused and you know you weren't happy and at this point you were still trying like just play, placate him right yeah, after the attack and and I still have to stay in the house um, so I am being nice and I'm still cooking and cleaning and I'm still of course my children had to eat so I had to cook but I'm still functioning. Um, in the way that I was before it happened, you know, I'm still reconciling in my mind. I'm still like, I, I was, I don't even know, I don't even know where I was. And 
I just well, let me read it. Up. Let me read it. Um, I understand you're, you're writing to Dimitri. I understand love. You know, um, this is only another part of you that I expect and love. I am so sorry that I made you feel the way you did. I will never do that again. Please forgive me, love. Um, you, you sure you don't have any questions? Laugh out loud. And then he replies, um, once you move on from me, I will advise you. I do not hope I have, I do hope I have given you some proper frameworks for how to be a proper wife, proper in, um, you know, caps, uh, to a proper man, also proper in caps and, uh, not an untrust, <laughs> not an unworthy, um, N. Um, I cannot believe I punched through a one inch thick board wine, please. Like, I guess he was asking you to send him wine cause he's the king. And then you write Caleb. So can you like explain this? Yeah. So when he choked me, I'm sorry, when he attacked me, um, after he released me, and I'm gasping for air at this point. He punches through his desk. It was a makeshift desk. Um, it was a ply board, and he had the the cement blocks, and he had his um, his Mac desktop on, and he punched his board, and he broke it in half. That is the one inch thick board he's speaking of. <sighs> this was in his office. So when he said wine, please, that's where I was bringing the wine. So he worked from home. He was at that desk from sunup till sundown. We brought him breakfast, lunch, and dinner and whatever else he needed. Um, he only saw the children at bedtime for the most part, in the mornings and at bedtime. So we were always with the children, always. And when she left the house, because she was gone at this time, she was in uh, Cincinnati, and I was left in a house with this person. So I was doing everything, cleaning, cooking, everything, until I got out of there. I did everything until I got out. And this, you know, I saw comments where people say, why, why wouldn't you run? You know, I used to ask the same thing when I, I heard about women being abused. And I'm like, why the hell would you just leave? Why would you leave? It? You don't, you don't know and don't understand until you're in it. Until you're there, you're frightened to have to death for your life, for your children's life. And what you have to do is what you have to do to survive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nobody will ever know what I am doing in the fear, the pain, blaming I know, myself. I can't. The entire time I blame I can't over here again. I can't. Oh. Allowing to be a part of that. I blame myself. <sighs> I just like anybody, I just, I wanted it to work. I, I did. I genuinely, when I got there, I had sincere intentions for everything. I didn't come there for fame or money. I came there because I wanted to be married and I wanted that that relationship construct. I wanted him. I wanted the support, the sisterhood, all of the things that they sold me was what I wanted. Don't blame yourself. That's not abnormal. Many women go through that. Right, John? It's it's a part of the cycle. It is. I mean, just, you know, and this is just one of I just threw. I just need to okay, one sec. I mean, when you went through therapy, they did tell you that that's how the cycle works, didn't they? Like, people can't judge you. It's part of the cycle, it's part of the mental of what you were going through. Me staying. You know, yeah. the therapist said that you know many women stay because they feel they bad. You know, they're being manipulated, so they're being made to believe that it's their fault. And if they exactly. somehow behave, if they somehow did what the the victimizer wanted them to do, that things would be better. You know, yeah. or that they'd be safe, they'd be okay. And so, you know, throughout being in the house and having so much wow. uh, manipulation, you know, mentally, yeah. it was psychological abuse. Yeah. Well of that and, and yeah. they would get in your head they would have exactly. that you did something wrong and so mm -hmm. a lot of the things that i did was me wanting to fix it yeah. i just wanted to fix it i yeah. want things to be okay so, that's why you coming forward is so important it really is how are your kids <laughs> like you know i i had um 
just reminds me a lot of my, my own mother and what she went through and sorry. Um, just why uh, I'd see it. Um, I mean, you know what? Do you, you know, your kids that were there, like, do they remember any of this? My oldest daughter, definitely. But maybe she even remembers some things. Oh, not, wow. not, not too much, though. That breaks my heart. <laughs> it's more so the oldest that remembers things. And she was so distraught and hurt because she, I remember her saying, Mom, you know, I thought he was one of the good guys. Mm. He was a good guy. Because he told her, she told me what he told her. The conversation that they had, he told her that he would never hurt her, that he loved her mother, he respected her mother, that he would always protect them. She remembered that, and she held on to his words. So when it happened, she's like, "Mom, I thought he was a he was a good guy. I thought he, he was so distraught." The child was traumatized and I didn't know what to tell her. Yeah. I didn't know how to re help her regain her trust in men. Right, yeah. Like, what do you tell a woman or child, a young woman who sees this? I didn't know what to say. I just held her and I told her I'm sorry and I, I could not stop apologizing. I think I apologized to them for years, for that, for years. That, and that's a lot to carry on your shoulders, man. For years, I carried it. And I had to deal with that in silence with my children. And, and obviously they're used to exposing their children to so much violence, but I was not. I was not. My daughters never witnessed that until then. I'm so glad you went to therapy. What made you go? I, I, I felt myself self-destructing. Mm. I was in my room all day from sun up to sun down crying. Mm. And I was I was no good for my children. Mm -hmm. And I could not operate and function that way. I was I, I was homeschooler. I was a hands on mother. I would do so much with my girls and I could not function for them. Mm. So I know I needed help. I need to seek somebody. And I had no friends in Atlanta at the time. I had no family. I had no safety net, no um, support system at all. Mm. So we were all we had, and I know that they needed me, and I needed to be functional, so I sought help. Good. Good for you. That's good. Are you okay, John? Yeah, I'm like, no, I'm, I just feel awful. Uh, I mean, it's just yeah, it's horrible. I, mean, I don't even have words. This reminds me of some stuff from my own childhood, and I mean, just, you know, I, I feel really bad. And then I wish I could like jump to the screen and hug you right now. I really do. Yeah. Uh, like, I really, I really do. Um, I, I wanted to um, answer, to finish answering Cheryl's question about um, why did I get help? Another reason why, you know, when I was in my room, I kept having obsessive thoughts. I was replaying so many scenarios and i remember one of the other wives telling me the same thing and when she said that i i grabbed my mouth i'm like oh my god that was me just replaying conversations and wishing that i would have said this and i would have done that and i would have and and that happened for months i'm just replaying this stuff over and over and over and it consumed my thoughts i was being consumed mm -hmm. by it all i was having dreams about what happened and I just, I could not live or continue to live that way. I had to, I had to get help. Good for you. I'm glad that you did in there. And you advise that for other women too, right? Absolutely. When there's true. Okay. Absolutely. Children, <sighs> they need to be able to make sense of what has happened to them. You as an adult, as a woman has to be able to make sense of what happened. You need somebody to tell you that it's not your fault. You need somebody to tell you that you didn't deserve that because you, you were made to believe that you are and that you do. And this is one of the reasons why women stay. They're told you deserve this or they, they're made to feel as though that they've done something to deserve it. And nobody does, nobody deserves that. No child, no woman deserves that type of abuse, especially when you know that you've, you've given your all or that you've 
you had pure intentions the entire time that you didn't, you weren't malicious. I was not a malicious person. I was not catty. I didn't come in there with that, that mentality or attitude because I knew what I was coming into. I knew I was coming into a shared space. I knew that I was coming into a relationship construct where I had to be, um, I had to be solution oriented or solution focused. I had to be, ha have prob problem solving skills and uh, conflict resolution. Like I understood these things and, and I grew up in a big family. So living and having a bunch of women around was something that I was used to. You know, I have a bunch of aunts, I have a bunch of sisters. So I understood what was needed in those types of spaces. I wouldn't have entered had I not. And yeah, I, I just felt like I was completely trashed for wanting to do right. And yeah, I mean, for, for him to tell me, he, he, you know, he's given, he's given me the proper blueprint for being a wife. Yeah. Like, yeah. And that he, he hopes that I would not find any N word. Like, yeah. And like, it makes me wonder, like, you know, I don't know how long Chrissy was there, but like, you know, she brought her kids and you know the stuff that you had said last night about like them being naked and you know like and just the stuff that you're saying right now about like you know your own children um and you know i i, I think about chrissy and her children and I, you know i don't know how long they were there uh but you know i can't i would have to imagine that the same thing kind of would have happened again oh yeah chrissy went through hell i heard she told me her story Mm. Absolute hell. Mean as shit to her children. Same thing to mine. But she got it way worse. She she dealt with way... The treatment was way worse. Some of the things she told me horrified me. Horrified me. I could not believe it. I just, worse than what you're telling everybody right now about you? Worse. Do you hear me? Oh my good God. Like, I... Oh my God! And then, they, and then, and she couldn't even get the the restraining order. That's that's I mean, sad. She got, she got the restraining order, and they said something about um, proof, and he he presented um, a text uh, saying that she was like wasn't she wasn't given a fair trial. That's let's say that she wasn't even. I, I don't want to say it because it's right. It wasn't fair, and she still she is she can still you know, pursue this. She can and she will. Let's just say that. Um, but yeah, that, that was bullshit. Absolute bullshit. She has proof that she was assaulted. There is someone else who witnessed her being and this person can testify for her. So... That was the person in the other state, right? Yes, that reached out. Yes. Yes. So... She will not, she will be vindicated. She will, I know she will. And she deserves it and her babies deserve it. And I know once this is all said and done, I just pray for healing for Chrissy and healing for Taylor and healing for Vanessa. They all need it. They all need it. Those women did not deserve what they got. They didn't. What but was I mean, your healing process like? How long did it take? And did you feel strong enough? Did you reach out to the other women first or vice versa? No, no, I, um, oh yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, um, actually one of the women reached out to me and then I reached out to someone else. <laughs> like we were all just, once this broke, yeah. we all started reaching out to each other. Um, but when it came to healing initially, um, you know, I went through all of that and then I decided to get therapy and then I just kind of followed what my therapist yeah. said was to journal write letters, that kind of thing. And so that's what I did. I write letters to myself. I wrote letters to the people that victimized me, although they never got the letters, but you know, just writing a letter. And I wrote the letters, I burned them. This was something that I did for myself. Um, a lot of spiritual work, you know, meditation, mm -hmm. yoga. Um, around this time I adapted sound therapy. So I use sound bowls as uh, a healing modality. What's so that? I that um, I can show you. You guys want me to show you? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I'm like snotting all over the place. No, it's fine. Trust me. 
So this is a crystal sound bowl and I have a few. Um, so with sound, sound is, is vibration. We're all creative of vibration and we have chakras that govern the body. We have seven. There's actually more, but seven that we know of. And um, with sound, every chakra has a frequency. So starting with the heart, it's 528. You know, the root chakra has a, a frequency and so on. So I gave, we're still here. I just gave you the bigger screen so you could like show everybody. That's <laughs> okay. I, we're, still, we're still here. <laughs> so um, this big baby here, this is the uh, root chakra. Um, it's tuned to the frequency of the root chakra. So what it does is the frequency, once you hear the bowl, it starts to align that particular chakra. So if that chakra is vibrating at a, a lower frequency, it raises the frequency to the frequency it's supposed to be at, at a normal balanced frequency. This is where the healing process begins. Because of all your chakras and where they're positioned in the body, say for instance, the root chakra, this is where your, your uh, sex organs are reproductive system. Women, um, it's understood that women carry our trauma in our wombs. So I did a lot of work on my root, my root chakra because I experienced a lot of trauma. Um, there are other great ways to balance your root chakra. You can do some earthing, meaning putting your feet on the earth. The earth itself carries a frequency. It's 7.28. It's called the Schumann resonance. You can actually look this up. Um, this particular frequency balances out the body as well. Um, so with the sound bowls, any chakra that I was having issues with, particularly the heart and the, the womb or the root, I would use these bowls to balance myself every day. And it definitely helped. It helped with my health as well, because not only are you, when your chakras are unbalanced, it affects the organs around the chakra. So people who typically suffer with um, heart chakra issues, they have lung issues, they have heart issues, they have issues with those organs. Same thing if, if a woman's been traumatized and she's not um, properly resolving the traumas, then she may have fi fibroids. She might have, um, you know, bad periods, heavy bleeding. Um, she may develop cystic cancers and, and, and have, what have you. Disease, when you hear the word disease, it's dis-ease. So you're no longer at ease. Diseases primarily come from your from what you eat and from your environment, what you experience. We hold a lot of energy in these chakras. Therefore, it affects all the organs connected to the chakras. So I'll give you guys a demo. know if you're aware of this but tina turner did this yes yeah t I, tina turner did it it must really work and i've heard of other women doing that too i've never seen that before ever like yeah. that, that's yeah. crazy tina, yeah, i've seen she was, it um, she became a buddhist and she yeah. would uh, chant nam yo horenge kyo yeah uh, yeah, yeah. And, and it definitely i mean meditation changed my life it changed mm -hmm. my life and it it brought about a new perspective it brought about so much self-compassion, so much understanding for my own, my own mistakes and my own shortcomings. And um, it allowed me to help my children heal because I taught them meditation and I taught them yoga and we would do this all the time. So, you know, this stuff isn't rooted in any religion. It isn't rich witchcraft or anything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All of it's about high frequency, high vibrations, positivity, bringing healing into your life and into your space. I just want to say I'm so proud of you. I feel it's hard for people when you're in it to see the growth, but um, your inspiration. Thank really? You. Go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Do you want me to read the um, what Ashley had said um, about 
her situation, what you sent me. Um, it's a. Um, so that text message was sent to me by a previous wife, a previous woman before me. So there were many women before me. Um, and she sent this after the first season aired with Jocelyn. Um, this was a heartfelt, long drawn out text from Ashley to Dimitri. She sent this to me because he sent it to her. So one of the things that Dimitri did to Ashley, he was not loyal. He was not loyal at all, clearly. Um, and he would share screenshots of conversations with her to other wives, to other women, women he considered friends. Wow. So he shared this with her. And this was like a 3 a.m. text that she sent him. And in this text, she admits that he physically attacked her. So yeah, um, in this text, she also mentions the wife before, um, the one that he, he was cheating with Dimitri. You know, she was a she was a mistress. Okay, she was the other woman, and the woman found out his wife and contacted her um, to tell her to approach her, and that's how she found out Dimitri didn't tell her. But she stayed. She stayed after she found out that Dimitri was married to someone else. Um, so she, in the text, she's asking herself, you know, is this my karma because, you know, I stayed and I knew what was happening. She talks about, she mentions Ty. She said that she thought that that would be the last of the deaths they die. And then the situation with Jocelyn and she was like, it's cemented in time, but they're able to save faith. Yeah. That's what they did. They made it, they made it seem like, oh yeah, it was scripted. It didn't really happen, but it happened. Clearly, it happened. So, yeah, this is a text where, you know, shit hits the fan. Um, so, I'm not making this up. You know, this is. Words. I'm just gonna read them. Uh, I'm not gonna post them, um, okay. uh, but I, I'm. I'll read them out loud. And just like you know what Ari just said. Um, hold on, let me get to it. Because this 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 um, tells a lot. And do you know what happened to Jocelyn? Like, was did she get the same treatment that everybody else got, or did she? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, the women weren't paid, so I don't know if I said that before. But they weren't. Oh paid. no, you didn't. <laughs> no, they didn't pay the women. These women weren't paid. Mm. So Chrissy the wasn't family. paid. No. And Taylor wasn't paid. No. Oh shit. People keep saying, "Oh, they did it for the money." There's no money for them. Ashley and Dimitri got the money. And oh, Dimitri God. kept calling and asking TLC for advances with his broke ass. <laughs> but they, you know how much do you happen to know how much they were getting paid per episode, or, or do you know, do you know that they they said it like twenty? I think they said twenty k or ten k, ten k or twenty a season or not an episode. That that's that's way beyond TLC's reach. Like that, but he was asking for more money throughout the the season. <laughs> So Christy and Taylor never, or Vanessa then, most well, right? No, no. They, no. Wow. Yeah, I. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and they have to sign these these ND uh, with the family and TLC, and they're not getting paid nothing, and going through that. Yep. That's why. You know, it, it's very insulting and hurt hurtful when I see comments about oh they did it for the money and the Snowdens have money. The Snowdens don't have money. That's one. Two, those women didn't do it for money, clearly. Doing doing it for fame, I you know, I I would wouldn't think that they would have done it for fame because it's reality T V, but whatever. Um but as far as far as the money, no. There was no money. Did they like did they like leave it in like uh the Snowden's hands to disperse the money? Like, did they think like, you know, they they were gonna be fair and, and pay them or? or I mean, TLC didn't give a shit as long as they were getting ratings and people were watching the show. So they didn't ask questions. They pro provided no protection, nothing, nothing. All right, so let me let me read this. This is you know what um, Ari just explained. This is this is coming from Ashley, um, and um, I'm just gonna read it out loud. Um, and who is she talking to one more time on this? She's talking um, to Dimitri. Okay, yeah. so this is from um, 
alleged from Ashley to Dimitri, um, deep down inside, I feel like we are out here living a lie. No, no woman on this planet would knowingly accept the things I've accepted with regards to infidelity. As I sit here and think about my actions and my inactions, I feel like I'm cold and have only grown colder to you, Dimitri, with each passing year as I develop some sort of am amnesia around my feelings of what's happened and what's happening. I thought I was a big girl, but I think that's some sort of denial that even I did sorry, that, that even I didn't recognize until boiling until boiling all the fat off the bones. My behavior this evening was indicative of the fact that I'm not still addressed my pain. I'm still hurt by all the times you had sex with women without my knowledge. It started with Ingrid. Um, you, knew, you knew how important sacred woman was to me and you effed her while I went to shower. And then when I was angry about it, you physically and emotionally attacked me. A piece of us died that day and has been dying ever since. I thought that Ty, Ty was the one, uh, Jay, that was his, the, the mother of his sons that were missing. Yes. Um, I thought that Ty was, was the last of the deaths we'd die and that things would finally begin to turn around because we were facing our demons once and for all. But then Jocelyn came into the picture and revealed an ugly truth and now it's cemented in time via television. And the whole time we are literally we are literally lying to America about who we are and what we stand for. Wow. We contradicted wow. ourselves so much on the show and I highly doubt, um, I, I'm a little out of order at this point. So just, um, who's Ingrid while I get the stuff in order that. <laughs> um, Ingrid was the woman that they had come from Brazil, much like Chrissy. This isn't the first time. Wow. <laughs> um, so Ingrid came from Brazil. And she, from what I heard, she was very beautiful. Ashley hated her. Dimitri loved her. Got, and she got rid of her. Wow. And that woman had to, she did sent her packing. I don't even know what became of Ingrid. Wow. Oof. They, they bring these women in and they, they dispose of them after they've used them, their resources, their time, their energy, everything. I and wonder how long they've been doing this. Can long you guess? Time. Long yeah, sounds like it. Reached out to me and said she's known them for eighteen, uh, known Dimitri for eighteen years, um, and Ashley and Dimitri had gotten together. I, I want to say they've been together for a total of now like 10, 11 years or something like that. So they've been doing it for a very long time. I mean, Dimitri met Ashley when he was married and cheating on his wife. So what you know, was already there for him? Um, for her, she just I don't know. I guess she started to accept. I don't wow. know even know how she dealt with that all, all the, but I wanted to say the sacred woman that she mentioned is, is based on this book. So she, when I first met her, she wanted to do a 21 day um, meditation, whatever it was to bond as it was over uh, with sacred woman. And so she wanted to do that to all the women because just like this 21 day um, vegan alkaline diet, bullshit, she tries to prevent him from sleeping with the women, but guess what he did? He slept mm. with her anyway. So this is what well, he did. Didn't he sleep like with Vanessa on the first night or so, like yes. last week? Yeah. He, like he what? slept with everybody. He, and it, it was his MO, the same thing while she was in the shower. <laughs> so she goes through all of this and she's trying to get you to do this and that. And she's full of shit. <laughs> full of it. All right. So move, continuing what she's saying. Um, I highly doubt anyone is going to believe it. Luckily, it's reality TV, so we can at least claim fake news to save face. And I can't even release the burden <laughs> of my pain by talking to you about it because you don't really agree that it could be what's, well, that this is a very long run on these sentence, hold on. And I can't even release the burden of my pain by talking to you about it because you don't really agree that it could be what's put a hindrance on our intimacy and personal relationship. And I can't talk to my friends for fear that they'll judge you without understanding the wonderful man that you are. But even more, I'm afraid that they'll judge me for staying with you. Kind of like a Kimi? Her friend. That's her friend. Okay. 
kind of like Kimi, who stays because of her love for the men. She, um, uh oh, John, we lost her. Oh. Well, I'll keep her. She'll come back. Um, Unbelievable. <laughs> kind of like for uh, uh, like a Kimi, who stays because of her love for the man who keep doing the same thing over and over, and yet we judge her. And then in the back of my mind, I'm like, wait, why did I bring this on myself? Thought I didn't find out about it. Hold on. I hope her phone didn't die. I bet her phone probably died. She was on her phone. Okay. Um, this is unbelievable. Just wow. Twist it. Though I didn't find out about Claudette until after I'd fallen for you. I believe Claudette was the first one. Um, and only because she messaged me did I somehow bring this on myself due to karma. I stayed with you anyhow. Do I do I somehow deserve this because I was aware that that you did it to her? Why would I think you wouldn't do that to me? Kind of like Iniko and Kevin Hart. But who who do I have to talk about any of this? Who do I have to help me work through this? I really wish she was here, so um, I bet you her phone died. Any, anything. So. Yeah. Uh, I'll just keep reading. I keep mentioning wanting to pause with bringing new women into our life so we can work on us. But I'm wondering if we could really just need to pause it, pause us. And this is just a question, not a suggestion, but you, but you need a break to go out and discover. Hold on. Discover the world without me holding you back from the type of family slash life you are trying to build. If you were to agree, if you were to agree, no, take an oath that you would use protection to prevent, prevent, to prevent pregnancy and infection. Do you think it might be helpful for you to take a break from being my husband and maybe see what it feels like to be with somebody else who might give you all the things you're missing, like intimacy, clean environment, moral and emotional support, and all the hypotheticals that I shut down and all the things you're not getting from me, like, um, oh Lord. Um, um, sex in the rear. Um, okay. Uh, whoa. <laughs> this is kidding. Fellatio and having 20 kids. Interestingly, interestingly, when I mentioned, Hold on. This is a lot. Inter when I mentioned, I hope she comes back. Hold on. Over the course of the last year that I felt depressed, it felt like you dismissed it in the same way you would dismiss when I would bring up illness or something with the children or with us. You would feel some type of way that I would just jump to the worst case scenario and that it couldn't be what I was saying it could be. But the way I felt this year was a culmination of not dealing with past issues and then feeling like I was stuck looking in the mirror, terrorized by my own shadow and terrorized by outside forces like the she devil and he devil. I was so numb while at the same time um, trying to be super supportive and help you find the silver lining through um, tapping in spirit spirituality. My intimacy took the shape of constant need to heal I just know, I just know that we both need healing. I am really, I am really so sorry that I've made our marriage so uncomfortable. I am really sorry that I am not the most affectionate person, that I suck at laundry, that I don't feed you enough, that I don't listen better, and that I'm not giving you what you need, and that you feel so undervalued and overlooked by me that I don't care. I want nothing more for you to be happy, content, and inspired to achieve all your goals and dreams. I have to do better, so we have to, so we have no choice but to heal. I apologize in advance if this long message angers you. It's not my intention to upset you, but it's how I feel. Um, Sad. And that's that's the end of that. Sad. She's she's brainwashed too. I think to it like a level, but I also think that, you know, and we talked about this last night that she plays a big part in this. Well, it's called Stockholm syndrome. You know how you, I thought, you know, I, I was, I was 
toying with the idea of Stockholm syndrome, and um, I, 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 I don't know. This was this interview was just as emotional for you as it was for her. It's unbelievable. I, I, I'm almost certain her phone died, and so I just want to give her a few minutes and maybe to charge her phone so she can come back on, because um, I know but, she was going off her phone. Do you want to take questions from the audience and give her some time to come? Because they yeah, were. I'm been... not going to drop a link, though. I don't know. No, no, no. Um, but you know, and this is you know. This was uh, from Ashley to Dimitri, and um, and you know, reading that it makes me want to feel bad for Ashley, but at the same time, no, no. I see Ashley being at the forefront of this. Exactly. And you know, I I I, I don't know. Ashley's not a victim. Yes, she's a victim of Stockholm syndrome, but you still have to. You can't hurt people like that and not expect to pay some kind of price for it. I mean, she, at this point, she's just as bad as he is, if not worse. That's my take on it. I yeah. couldn't agree with you anymore. Um, and uh, it's just a mess. And, you know, um, when she was saying, you know, how Chrissy went through it a hundred times worse than her, I can only imagine what they put her through. You know, and she she made it clear that you know Chrissy, Vanessa, and Taylor, the last three sister wives, are all in hiding, hiding in different countries. I mean, I don't know if Vanessa is, but definitely, uh, you know, Taylor and Chrissy. Even though Chrissy's from South Africa, so try to, but I, I don't even know where she is. You know, you're in hiding for a reason, so people can't find you. Um. And I've gotten so many messages from people saying the Snowdens are scary people. Be careful what you say about them. Um, you know, and you don't I have to be careful because this is not your story. This is someone else's story. So what could you um, say? And just to like say, like, you know, I've gotten hundreds of messages today and I've been trying my best to, um, you know, read them. But it's a lot. And, you know, I know that lawyers reached out and they want to help. And I'm going to, I'm going to direct everybody to Ari. Um, so. Lawyers want to help Ari? Yeah. Oh, that's great. A lot, a lot of people want to help Ari. That's great. Um, let me text her. Let me see. If it doesn't get delivered, then I'll know her phone died. Yeah. Ooh, this was um, needed. She has to get her story out, but it was very emotional, very um, poignant. Yeah, it's not showing red or anything. I don't, want to, I don't want to end this without her, but it's her story, and it's I don't really story. want to. I don't want to speak on it without her being here at the same time. We might have to cut it short. I believe it has to come from her words, her mouth, because it's her experience, and also. I feel like it'll have a bigger impact on other victims. It sends a message that she overcame this. So can I, and this is the steps that she took. And maybe I can take the same steps. And, you know, and she said like, there are other people who are, who want to come forward. So, you know, we'll be here for them. Um, and, you know, I just, I, I, I have like little to no faith with the network, you know, just seeing like what the Duggars are going through right now. And they knew about the Duggars and, you know, how, you know, they were paying the Duggars, you know, Jim, Bob, the father was making all the money. The kids weren't getting paid anything. Like adult kids weren't getting paid anything. I, I even believe I read today that still on the counting on show that only the father gets paid and, and nobody gets paid anything else. But did you sure. hear about the petition that was started today? What was that? People want, they don't want TLC to pay Jim Bob anymore. And they should. Because <laughs> they say he's going to use the money for Josh. And then people want TLC to be held accountable. So that's what's going on. It really makes them look bad. They have to do something. They're going to have to make a state. Well, they made a statement on Josh saying that they feel bad about the situation and all that. But they're going to have to do something. Because it's 
no other network has these problems. You don't hear about Bravo. You know, you've got jo uh, Jacob Ro uh, Roloff. You've got the Snowdens. You've got the Duggars. I mean, it's just adding up. You've got Stephanie from 90 Day. Remember, she made accusations and it's just uh, starting to be too many people. TLC has to do something. They just yeah. do. Uh, and, you know, like, you know, they're they're getting paid a lot of money, you know, for these shows. You know, it's a lot. A lot of people watch TLC shows and, and they're like known for not paying their cast anything. You know, and just her saying, just, you know, Ari saying that only Dimitri and Ashley were getting paid and not, that's insane. Mm -hmm. hmm. Oof, it's a lot. Um, all right, you know what? I don't, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm almost certain that her phone's dead because I got no, you know, she just wouldn't cut off like that. And, uh, um, were you going to do a part three? This is part three. <laughs> this, this is you part might have three. to do. You got to. You got to do a cloak. Uh, what is it called? Uh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the final chapter or something like that. She's got it, and it has to end in her words. And she, you know, it's just she needs to. Someone said in the chat, "Big Ed." Yeah, we're getting all of these allegations from TLC. You don't hear these allegations from Bravo. You don't hear them from. Uh, VH1 or any other I'm gonna, network. I'm going to call her. Okay. <coughs> she can't pick up if the phone's dead. Oh, it's ringing, actually. Oh. Hello? It's Sean. I figured your phone died, but we're still live. Did you want to, like, come back on real quick? Like, and just... Okay. Yeah, you use that link, um, you know, because we're worried about you. I, I figured your your phone had died. So, um, yeah, just, you know, I, I don't want to end this without you because, I you know, it's like no closure. So I, I just, you know, come back and um, keep your phone plugged in and then we'll just, we'll, we'll wrap it up, okay? No problem. It happens to me all the time. All right, bye. All right, her phone died. So she's going to come back. Um because I, I didn't we'll wanna... wrap it up. We won't keep her long. She, no, you could tell her um, like an hour and 40 minutes. Oh, my, we well, are. I know it's oh my gosh. Yeah, we got to wrap it up. Yeah, Whew. uh, brave, isn't she? Yeah, um, and you know, not only have I heard that the Snowdens are you know scary from people in that group, but just like people, a lot of people are saying, you know you don't go up against them because so she's we're on the radar now. So, um, but you know, some, you know, I'm happy to provide her with a way to get her story out. And, um, I know that, you know, you spoke about on your channel and sarcasm wrote a beautiful article about her today. Like, um, a couple other outlets did and people need to know. Um, so, Let's you know what it. makes me feel better is you show that video of Taylor and she seemed hopeful. That was so like, I saw that and like, you know, I will, you know, we, you know, we joke about this. Like when you do, you, when you do a story and then like, you know, you go to bed and you wake up and like, you're like, you know, you, <laughs> you know, like you don't know what to expect. Yeah. Or, yeah. I'm so mm -hmm. scared to look at, you anything. know, and my phone was ringing, beeping, like, Jumping off the, the bed. He said to me this morning, he goes, my phone's been going like crazy. I said, I know. I said, well, <laughs> what, what do you expect after last night? And I looked at it. And, and it's right. Oh, like, here she is. <laughs> hey, welcome back. I'm so sorry. My phone. No, don't apologize. I knew, I, I knew you're, I knew you were going off your phone and it, it probably, um, gave out so yeah, uh and I, I completely forgot this is a charger i completely forgot to plug <laughs> that sucker in and the phone goes out and i'm like shit and i'm sorry and i'm like no <laughs> so i plug it back in and you have to do that whole wait where you're waiting well some of the comments were like just just call her because i texted you and i didn't hear anything back like, just call me like, you know that's a good idea like they didn't know if like there was a knock on a door and that's like, someone just dragged you out or something like that so <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> god no I, I i pray that that never happens <laughs> <laughs> I, me too um, but I, I kind of went through, I, I finished reading the text that Ashley wrote to, uh, and you obviously know what's written there. So yeah. 
um, to kind of bring this all home, what do you, you know, what say you about that? Cause that was like kind of like the last piece of the puzzle. She was trying, I mean, she basically said, or asked him questions like, why do I feel as though I need to protect you from these women? She felt, she feels like he's going to destroy himself. So she has to be there to protect him, to stop him, to be a buffer for his behavior. So this woman is literally, she's, she's a victim. You know, she really is at the heart of it all. She is a victim because she's there thinking that she has to protect him. She's there thinking that she can't live without him. This is why she hasn't left. She's, you know, he's physically, she said it. He's physically, you're physically and verbally attacking me. And I've heard him yell, cuss, scream. More I mean, but has happened to her. And is she, she's still there. But is she also at fault? Like, I, I mean, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Cause at, at some point you, she turned from a victim to a victimizer. Yep. And yep. Maybe this is, this is how she reconciles it in her hand. Maybe this is how she makes sense of it all, of the trauma mm -hmm. by becoming an abuser. I mean, this happens to children who are um, sexually abused. They, they sometimes become abusers and this is how they're able to, you know, reconcile this in their minds of what happened to them. So they become like, 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 right. It's like taking back your power. Somebody takes something from you, they rape you and then you become a prostitute. So you're like, okay, yeah, I've been molested. I've been raped as a child, as a teenager, whatever. And they took it from me for free. So now I'm going to make them pay for it. You know, that kind of thing. So I'm taking my power back. So she's become a victimizer in her effort, her mind's effort to um, take her power back. So in that text message, you see a very sick, abused yeah. person yeah. who becomes a victimizer, but you see a very sick and abused person telling this other person that they're not trying to leave them, but giving them options. So if you, she says in the, in the text, you know, what if we just took a break and you go and travel and, and you deal with women and, and you just see what life is like without me. And if you promise or take an oath to protect yourself from diseases and pregnancies and like, she's literally giving this man options to go and sleep around and cheat because she doesn't have the courage to say, you know what, I deserve better. This that's woman, that's right. To walk away from, and she still doesn't, you know, and she's still there and she's still aiding and abetting. And, I mean, what can you do? You know, when you see that type of that type of thing and you know that mindset, it's not a whole lot I could do. Even if I was a friend, if I it was if I was a family member, I wouldn't know what to do with with that. How to get her out? I know that those babies. Those babies need protection because if they're there witnessing abuse on any level, that is not good for them. I know what it does. I know what it did to me. So I can only imagine what it does to children who are still in a, in a state of, you know, their minds are still being molded and it's still very pliable and it's still, you know, malleable is what I'm what the word I'm looking for. Their minds are still developing. And so they're seeing this and, and they're internalizing it and thinking that this is normal. That behavior has been normalized. Seeing women come and go, come and go. I mean, people have seen this with their own eyes on the show. You see all of these women and these babies are attached to these women because it's probably the only affection and love that they actually get. <laughs> you know, because behind closed doors, when the, the camera's off, <sighs> all types of shit is happening. And these babies are right there in the middle. They're right Ugh. there with it all. So, yeah. Ari, do you think once a person becomes a victimizer that they still need to be held accountable? Absolutely. I mean, you still have to, if you, regardless to whether you have been a victim, if you are committing a crime to any degree, yes. you need to be held accountable for the crime. And you, and simultaneously, you need help. So you yeah, need to yeah. be held accountable and you need to get help because that's, that's the only way that you would recover and not do it again, right? So she needs help, but she also needs to pay for whatever crime she's committed. Powerful. Go ahead, John. Sorry. No. Um, is there anything else that you want to say, Ari, that, you know, hasn't been said or, uh, you know, like that we didn't maybe gloss over or. Um, just, just believe I would like, the, I just want to show you, you get like everything you want out there. Like, you know, just yeah. <clears throat> um, everything I've, I've said a whole lot, um, probably more because I definitely don't want to get anybody in trouble. So hopefully I don't get other people involved. Um,
but I do I do want the public to know that this is not a, a ploy for money. This is not a ploy for fame. This is not an attack or witch hunt, so to speak. This is so that victims can get justice. And that well, why would you need fame? You're you're an actress. You're in you're you're sad. You're in SAG. You 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 know you don't you don't need fame from this show. They needed you for it. No, not at all. And and that's not what I'm looking for here. Because I saw a, a comment somebody made. Well, what do you seek to gain by providing this information? I seek to gain justice for myself and for others. I seek to gain retribution. Something needs to happen. And I seek to gain protection for women in the future and children mm -hmm. in the future. Nobody deserves this. Nobody deserves to go through this. No one. And if I can protect other women from this and other children from enduring this type of trauma, I will. And that's what I'm doing. And I'm putting my own life on the line. I'm putting my own brand. You know, I'm a person just like everybody else. I, I'm a mother. You know, I have children, I have family, I have a business. I've th I thought about all these things. I have a career, you know, and this is not something I want to attach to my name, but I am willing to risk it because I cannot, I can no longer sit back and be quiet while these people are victimizing other people. I can't do that. And I, I'm sorry that I live in a world where people are okay with filming people being victimized and being hurt and posted it on the internet and, and being okay with that shit. I'm not okay with it. I'm not. I'm, I'm for truth. I'm for justice. And, and I just, I can't, I can no longer be silent. I can no longer. So whatever consequences come my way, I am fine. Let it come to me. I am okay with that. As long as another woman is not victimized, as long as another child is not traumatized, yeah. I am okay with that. Good for you. Good for you. I'm proud of you. Now. I'll write it out with you, girl. I'm with you. And like, you know, whatever, whatever we need to do to help, we're going to do it. And you have a lot of support and, um, well, love. And I know the people in these, in the comments, um, there's always an asshole or two, but, uh, we got 1300 and somewhat people in this chat. Um, a lot of people support you. I support you. Sherelle supports you and we're going to help and whatever we can do to help you, then we're on it. Thank you. And that's a promise. Yeah. For me too. Thank you again. This has been needed. Thank you. And like, you know, you are brave and courageous and you, you are getting nothing out of this, but you know, you're getting nothing. 0. 0.00 out of for this. Anything, for anything. For none of my stories, I'm not being paid for any of this. I want people to know that. There is no monetary gain for me. Just so, me. I mean, nobody would put themselves out there like how you're putting yourself out there if you weren't speaking the truth. And, um, yeah. And that's important to that's important to state because you you're doing this to put the word out there so people don't get victimized and uh, God bless you for doing that. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate you both. Thank you. All right, guys, um, we're gonna end this. Um, guys, you know, obviously, sure you know the drill. Guys, just say it like backstage for a second. Um, everybody, thank you for being um, so respectful. The super chats. You, you know, I'm sorry I couldn't get to all the comments. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think we've we've covered it, and you know, we'll, I'm sure there'll be more to it at some point. Um, but for right now, let's just call it a night and good night, and thank you, everybody. Bye, guys. Thanks again, Bye. Ari. Thank you.